welcome to a new video. This is a two-parter. It got really long and I just want to finish these kitchen cabinets both in physical form and in video form and move on to other things. I just want to be done with this once and for all. So part two will be coming out at 5 p.m. tomorrow on Saturday. So there's a lot to do. Let's just get straight into the work and I'll see you at the end of the video. Good morning from another lovely day. The weather is absolutely stunning. I'm anxious to get started. Because, though, I'm sure you're as sick of looking at these kitchen cabinets as I am, I'm almost done. I just have two more small things, smallish things, to finish, and then I can forget about that corner for the foreseeable future and move on to something else. Let's go see what I have to do and just get started. All right, welcome back to the corner of darkness. So... I want to put tongue and groove on the side here, and I want to get some shelving across here. And once I do this, it means I can then put the hose out the hole and move the oven over into the space that I've been working, which will then create more space on the other side, which will make life a lot easier and happier. So yeah, I'm almost there. I can feel that it's nearly finished. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And all of that stuff so yeah let's let's keep going let's keep pushing on I'm gonna make the side of the kitchen cabinet with this tongue and groove stuff here um, I bought it yesterday for about 10 euros it's unfinished which means it'll need some sanding but I am very used to sanding and the alternative to this unfinished stuff for 10 euros was finished stuff for two and a half times the price so this is what I have let's bust it open see what it looks like and stick it onto the side of the cabinet. So the height is around 81 centimeters, but I'm gonna do it a bit longer, fasten everything together and cut it all down into the correct size and shape that I need uh, once it's all one, one piece. You always want to check each piece for knots and defects and cracks and things. Uh, this was a very cheap stack of tongue and groove, so I expect it'll have lots of problems with it. This woodworking that I'm doing now will be hidden by the stove anyway, the side of the stove, but I think this is very beautiful grain. Uh, it would be nice to have this on display, but it is not to be this time. Okay, so I found my chosen pieces. Uh, these four pieces here look adequately unsexy enough to be used in a spot where no one's gonna see them. So now I'm gonna cut the pieces to size, give them a little bit of a sand, glue them together, give them a final sand, cut it all to size so it fits into place, and then oil it up and fasten it on. That's the order of activities for today, and I hope I can get it done. This is all going to get cut down to a more exact size at the end. It'll be trimmed off, so I don't need to be too perfect right now. It's always good practice to check twice, cut once. Yes, that looks good. Uh, I'll make sure to line up all the pieces at the bottom to be more or less in line, and then I can just slice it off at the top. And then the idea is the pieces just connect them together do, 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 and then come out here. I cut it off somehow and then I put a little piece of trim on the edge, a little rounded piece of wood that I bought yesterday. Hopefully it fits. And then down here where we've got the little edge, I just cut out a piece there. And yeah, hopefully this all goes to plan. All right, so I've got the pieces sanded the first time, front and back. So they're all ready to go. And what I'm gonna do now is assemble them, clamp them on the place, well, glue them along the long edge, 
assemble them all together and clamp everything down and let it dry. I've got my clamps, I've got the big clamps, and over here in the shady part where I'll be working, I have a board to kind of clamp everything down to and hold it in place so that they don't want to warp or move around. All right, so time to glue and assemble. I've had a change of plans. I'm gonna stop working on this for the moment. The sun is creeping into my work area. I've got these guys sanded and ready to go, but I'm going out shortly in about a couple hours and I don't really wanna rush the gluing and clamping. It's quite important to get it nice and square and take, it's something I wanna take my time on. So rather than try to fit it into the next couple of hours, I'm just going to leave it to a new day. It's a brand new day and I'm ready to tackle, again, the tongue and groove. I've got them all laid out and I'm just gonna get into it and get this done as soon as I can while taking my time so I can attach them to the cabinet and be done with it. I've got everything I need here. I've got the clamps, I've got a square, I've got some wood glue, and I obviously have the tongue and groove. The tongue and groove have a front and a back. You can kind of tell by the way it's been sanded, um, often there's marks in the back, but the main way to tell is that the front has two sort of leany inny uh, capery bits, and the back only has one and one straight edge. So when these are all put together eventually, it sort of has kind of a, a little space in between each one. I want to think about where each piece will end up in the final product. The back piece, the one that's closest to the wall, will be sort of sawed off. It'll be scribed to fit into the wall and sawed off. So I don't really want any knots close to the edge of whichever piece ends out here because knots make everything go crazy. And then at the front, I'm going to be cutting out a little section where the toe kick is for the shelving. So likewise, I don't really want knots here either. So I'm going to rearrange everything um, so that the knots aren't in the way. Another thing to think about, which I don't think is so important for this, because the oven will be blocking off the entire side of the shelf, but if any of it was visible, I'd also want to pick some of the nicer pieces of wood um, that people see. And then if anything is crappy and weird looking, they can be banished to the back and no one shall lay eyes upon them ever. So they fit in together just like that. And all the way along. I'm going to want to glue these because these things have a tendency to want to split apart um, and I'd just rather have them all nice and snug. As I glue them, I'm going to try my best to keep the bottom part as square as possible and then that's going to leave me at the top with probably a couple of centimeters that I'll measure and cut to size. And so now basically I just go along piece by piece, glue and clamp, glue and clamp, glue and clamp, glue and clamp. So this is probably going to get super messy because I don't have a little brush to apply the glue. I don't really want to do it with my finger and yeah, this is just like a giant, a giant glue hole. So it'll probably want to come out pretty quickly, uh, so I'll have to be pretty fast going across. Let's just see how it goes. And when you clamp it together, the force of the clamps will make it want to bow. It's not such a big problem just with two or three pieces, but as it gets bigger, I'll be clamping it in the other direction as well. And so because I haven't linseed oiled this yet, I'll be able to just come by and scrape the glue out with a little knife. And then any glue that gets on the sides, I'll be able to sand that away. So I'll let this dry just for a couple of minutes, and then I'll probably work in twos. So I'll take these clamps off glue up these two, glue up those two, and then fasten the whole thing together afterwards. That went surprisingly smoothly. I'm very happy with that, and now I'm just gonna crack on with the other two.
Here's my crazy contraption that I've made. It's keeping it more or less unbowed this way. It'd be better to have a few more clamps, but I don't. And it's pulling it in tight this way so that the glue has a chance to stick. And same over here. I've got a nice strong piece of wood and I've actually clamped it down to the board as well. So this side's probably gonna look a little better than that side does in the end. Yeah, so I'm happy with this. I've got this one final piece to put on this side over here and then I can let it dry for a little bit and oil it. One thing that's smart to do is to use the clamp to actually pull, just to try to pull the piece in close together. So, you know, I only have so much hand strength in pushing this with my hands. It doesn't really give me a lot of force. So I can take the clamp and use it in each section of the wood, and then that'll just get everything nice and pulled in together and hopefully let the glue do its job. And then I can clamp it on the end. So that was pretty painless. It didn't take so long. It looks good and I'm going to let it dry and I will be back in a moment to unclamp it and oil it. I think you can see there that there's a bit of a bow here, but it'll be fine. Nothing a bunch of nails can't hammer back into place, I think. So let's see what size I need to cut this to. Alright, eight centimeters from the ground to the sticky part. And about six centimeters to the front from there. So I'll be cutting out a little rectangle here. But I'm not coming all the way out with the tongue groove to the very front because it'll look bad, I think. So I bought this trim stuff that hopefully will look good. Let's go get it and see how big that is, because that's going to help me determine how far out I come here. So this is the trim stuff, and the idea is that it just kind of gets somehow attached. Nails or small nails or glued, I'm not sure. This is my plan. I don't have a lot of experience with the old finished carpentry, so I'm kind of curious about this. It should be fun. So I'm going to hold the trim in place, make a line, and then that's what I'll measure up to for chopping the thing off, if that makes sense. I'm speaking weirdly. I think that's because I'm thinking as I'm speaking, but this all seems to make sense in my head. So that's what I'll do. I think before I do anything, I'm going to try to cut this groovy bit off here. Uh, it needs to be very, very straight so it matches in with this trim, so it could be quite tricky. It's going to have to be very precise. So I'll do that first, and then I'll move on to the measuring. I have a bit of a dilemma because I'm not sure which saw to use to make this cut. Using hand saws would be ridiculous. It wouldn't be possible to get it straight enough and accurate enough. And then I have my jigsaw, which I really don't like. And then I have my double battery circular saw, which I love, but that would be the most amazing overkill ever for these thin little bits of wood. So I think I'll just use the jigsaw and hope that uh, everything goes okay. I think with the thicker pieces of wood, the blade has a tendency to kind of go off of square because you're forcing it pretty hard. But I think with a thin piece of wood like this, well, I hope with a thin piece of wood like this, it'll be fine because it's important that this stays uh, at a right angle so that the trim that I put in fits nicely with the front face of the board. So jigsaw it is, and I'll go get it and hope for the best. Here's the setup. I've got this piece and these clamps in place to stop the tongue and groove from bowing. I've got this metal piece clamped down 
as a guide for the jigsaw, and then I've got this piece holding everything down to the board underneath. So let's give it a try. I really, really, really don't like this jigsaw. Uh, the vibrations are kind of shaking this all around. It's very difficult to hold it against the thing. Uh, kind of sucks. I'm not one to blame my tools, so I'm sorry, Jigsaw. It's not you. I'm sure it's me. But every job I try to do with that thing, I balls it up somehow, and I don't know. I have everything in place. I should be able to kind of hold the thing against this and have that go in a straight line, but it just, the blade wanted to kind of take it off course, I guess, or maybe it was just me. I'm not sure. Perhaps... It's not the right tool for the job. I totally thought it was. But now I'm gonna bring out a tool that's definitely not the right tool for the job, the hilarious two battery gigantic circular saw. And that should go through this like butter. And hopefully I won't have this issue. Okay, this is absolutely overkill for this job, but do what you gotta do. Okay, I got most of the way through with this beast. It looks pretty good, but the clamp is in the way at the other end. Um, so I don't know if it's just easier to finish it by hand, or if it's a horrible mistake. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'm gonna try to finish it by hand. <laughs> It looks good to me. I can probably refine it a little bit with some sanding, but I'm very pleased with this. So this part here is the front. This is the outside. So the stove will be here. This is the inside of the kitchen cabinet. And what I've done is cut basically on an angle because this is, believe it or not, how much the wall leans in. So as it is, it should slide in nicely to the side of the cabinet. So let's go put it in place and fingers crossed this thing fits and I didn't make any horrible mistakes. So one thing I didn't account for was that this little piece here comes up um, about, I don't know, almost a centimeter. So I'll have to take a corner off of here. And it looks like I also have to scrape out a bit of the lime so everything fits nice and snugly. In theory, all of this should line up so that this little piece fits. Yeah, snugly there, so with some adjustment. So this is a little um, annoying. The, uh, what's it called? The trim is a bit thicker than the tongue and groove. I thought both were one centimeter, but actually I guess that's quite a bit less than a centimeter. So I don't know what to do here. It probably would be difficult and possibly look weird to sort of shave off the edge of that trim. So I might have to hold off and see if a smaller size exists. I just don't know. I just don't know what to do. But I'm sick of waiting. Maybe I can take that off. I don't know how. I do have a plane somewhere. Chisels. Whatever I do, it could be messy, but if it's messy, I can clean it up with a sander, so... I shall eat lunch and give it some thought. I'm so close and the sun is coming to get me. I sawed off the top. I've sawed off the side. I've made the little nook there for the front and the little nook for the back. And the bottom lines nicely along the floor. So. Everything seems to be ready, and now it's time for a little sandy sandy, and a little oily oily.
Okay, I'm very happy with that. The sun is coming to get me, so I need to work a bit more quickly. So I'm gonna do the back, let it dry, two more coats, and then put it in place, hopefully tomorrow morning or later today, we'll see. Look at how crazy this sky is. It's a new day. It's 4.30 p.m. on a Friday. I have about a half an hour before I have to go publish my video. So I'm going to try to complete one more piece of the kitchen cabinet puzzle. So I've got this piece here. It's the trim that goes on the front. And I basically need to chop it off so it's a little bit more narrow. So it's the same thickness as the thickness of the tongue and groove. It's going to involve drawing a line across the whole thing and then some very... Uh, precise and gentle chiseling. got it all clamped in place. This looks quite good. And then the plan will be to oil this guy. Well, first fasten this on, oil this one, and then fasten it after. I think. I think that's the plan. Looks pretty cool. I am very impressed with this. Very impressed indeed. And down here just needs to be cut off so there's space for the trim. And then it all has to be cut off in some sort of angle to connect together in a nice way. Or maybe I just leave it flat at the bottom. Hmm. Maybe I don't even put trim here. What do I think? I think I maybe want trim. I just don't know. I don't know what to do. But I am wondering if putting trim at the bottom is more of a hassle than I really need in my life. I think it might be. I think it might be. It's a new day. It's very beautiful out. I'm well rested and I've been thinking about my cabinets, as you do. I spend a lot of time thinking about my cabinets. And I've come to a decision about the trim on the front. I'm not actually going to put it on the bottom part. I'm just going to put it on the side part. I feel like it would be way too much hassle trying to chop it, everything properly uh, to get it to look good on that little bottom bit. And I think it's unnecessary. You won't even see it. I think it's overkill and it'll just have the potential of screwing everything up if I make a wrong cut. So I'm going to stick with the trim on the front, get it all linseed oiled, and then... I guess, attach everything. All right, this guy here is the second to last piece of the cabinet puzzle. I still need to make a shelf for the inside. Oh, and also a top. But for the moment, I'm focused on this. So let's get this guy in place. Let's attach the tongue and groove and let's check this off the list for now. But let's do all of that tomorrow where we go to part two of the kitchen cabinet video. Actually, probably like part five, but I've lost track by now. And we'll finish it off. And that'll be the end of this job for the foreseeable future until I put the countertop on. So I'm gonna call it on the work and I'll see you tomorrow at 5 p.m. for part two. As always, thanks for watching. 
Uh, please like, subscribe, share it around. Please comment if you have any questions or just want to say hello. I always love hearing from people. So that's it for now. I'll see you tomorrow at 5 p.m. for part two. Thank you.